Hello and welcome to a special episode of the Epic Film Challenge, uh, the first one. Um, I'll probably be doing a few of these special episodes, just film based things really, and um, you know, it could be anything really, I won't go into too much detail, let's just kick this one right off. This is my top 10 uh, favourite films of 2011, that's favourite films, not what I think are the top 10 best, because I haven't seen all the films of 2011 obviously, and there's quite a few. Uh, that were quite critically acclaimed that I didn't get to see. So, uh, first one, I'm just going to give you the top 10 uh, from joblow.com, which is pretty much like the best film website in the world. Um, number 10, Hannah, which I didn't see. Number 9, Warrior. 8, Fast and the Furious 5. Number 7, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Number 6, Moneyball. Number 5, We Need to Talk About Kevin. Number 4, Bridesmaids. Number 3, 50 50. Number 2, Attack the Block. And number 1, Drive. Uh, no, I think they did a few top ten, like a few of their editors uh, or uh, you know columnists did different top tens. But this was the first one that went up, so I'm just that's a general kind of idea of what you know a top ten might look like. Now, um, my top ten, uh, discounting Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, which I really wanted to see but didn't get a chance. Drive again, I really wanted to see didn't get a chance. Uh, Moneyball, you know, I'm kind of interested in that. Uh, Kevin Smith is really raving about it, so. I'm going to have to see that at some point. And we need to talk about Kevin. Uh, that looked like a very interesting film. Probably one that you'd have to be in a pretty morbid mood to watch. But um, I didn't get a chance to see that either. So, my top 10 favourite list, 2011. Uh, Connie was going to do this with me. But, um, you know, I think she'd just take a while kind of deciding what she wanted to put in her top 10. And it would probably get confusing and too long. She's not, you know, she's not that interested in doing it anyway. So, here we go. Number 10, Bridesmaids. This is a really funny film, and people are like, really like, it's, it's really critically acclaimed, you know, um, they're, they're making a, a sequel, and um, and Kristen Wiig, who's a, the, the lead in it, she doesn't want to make a sequel, so the, the studios are actually trying to make a sequel without her now, because the film was such a massive success. Um, but yeah, it's a really, really good film, really funny, you know, uh, good, well, good to decent storyline behind it. But just a really, really funny film. Definitely the funniest film of the year uh, that I've seen anyway. Um, and yeah, it deserves to be in the top ten for me. Number nine, In Time, which uh, surprised me. I thought it was going to be really shit. It was actually really good. Um, I thought I really enjoyed it. Killian Murphy was awesome as the um, the timekeeper in it. Uh, Justin Timberlake was pretty good. And um, I forget the woman who was in it, but she, she, she was pretty good. Although it seemed a bit weird because she's a bit older. And she's playing someone a bit younger. But um, I really like the concept. It was like a film like you'd never seen before. Um, you know, as far as I can see anyway. There might be other films that are similar in concept. But um, I really enjoyed this one. It was uh, one of those ones that you go in not expecting much. And came out thinking, well, that's pretty good. And number eight, Crazy Stupid Love. Again, one of those films we just went to see because it was out. And it turned, turned out to be really good. Steve Carell it was amazing in it. Ryan, Ryan Gosling was awesome. He played a really good part in that film, um, and yeah, it, it was just like you know different love stories kind of uh, twisting together and pulling apart, and just kind of it was really really well done um, with a, a fun twist at the end, and it was just acted really well, you know, all throughout. And there was a great scene in it between Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling, which is one of the most realistic kind of. Um, getting to know you kind of romantic scene I've ever seen in a film and it's really funny as well so yeah really good film that one number 7 Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows part 2 I originally put this quite high up in the list and then Connie said really? and I thought about it I thought yeah true I mean Harry Potter um, Deathly Hallows part 2 there's a lot I didn't like about it but there was a lot more that I did like about it it was a very well done film a great end to the series but uh, not the best of the series I don't think um yeah, and I could talk for hours about how much I hated the the way they uh, did the ending of that film and changed it from the book. But, you know, it is an adaptation at the end of the day. Um, and it was still a really good film, but, um, you know, when I think about it, it, it's not as good as the other ones I've got on the list above it, um, for me anyway. But it was a really good one. Uh, number six, Super 8. I love this film. Again, it felt like a, um, kind of like a Spielberg film, you know, and... Uh, Kind of like, I love I love films where like kids are the main characters and um uh, you know and the kids are good you know obviously you know we, when you cast in child actors it can 
be pretty hit and miss, but sometimes you hit, you hit a great cast like the Goonies or Stand by Me, um, and this one really hit it out of the park, and it was just a really really good film. I thought uh, number five, Troll Hunter. Uh, now this film um, is Norwegian. My fiance being Norwegian, she saw it um, long before it came out here, and she told me how good it was, and I wasn't really that interested. And then she brought it over one time, and I was like, eh. And then she forced me to watch it, and I really enjoyed it then. Um, yeah, and I thought, wow, that's, it really surprised me. I mean, it's like a found footage film, and the way they did, they did it was really good. Um, it's probably my favourite um, found footage film um, that's ever come out. You know, it's better than Blair Witch, better than all those those crap films. You know, I really enjoyed it. And what I enjoyed the most is that it's, it's like a small Norwegian film, and the effects are really good. Like, the troll effects are really good, and especially considering they're not put on film, they're actually on HD video footage, not, you know, so I was really impressed with the, the way they kind of mix that in and stuff, and I think, I just love the subtle humour in it, and I love the the outlandish humour in it, I think it's really, really good, I love how they take the mythology of trolls and try and make it, like, scientifically correct and stuff, and it's just a really fun film, um, with some great kind of, like, visual eye candy that I really, really enjoyed. And whenever nothing's happening and they're just driving around, you just get this amazing landscape. I mean, when did we had to see this in the cinema when it came out in the UK, and it was just, you know, just amazing. Uh, number four, X Men First Class. Now I only saw this towards the end of the year when I bought all of the X Men films on Blu-ray. Um, this is an awesome film. I, you know, I'm, I mean, I'd heard how good it was, but it really was good. James McAvoy as um, Charles Xavier was amazing. I've loved, I loved his acting since um, Shameless back in 2004. That's uh, around what time he really started to break out in film. Yeah, and he does a really good job of being um, Professor X, kind of, before he was, you know, the Professor X we know and love. And I love that he kind of had this kind of cocky streak in him as well, and he wasn't just like, you know... I like that there's a bit of an arc there, you know. Um, what was his name? I think it's Michael Fassbender. Brilliant as Magneto. Absolutely amazing. The best performance of the film by far. Really, really brought a lot to the to the role, and uh, the rest of the cast are great too. Um, the only problem I had with this was the Kevin Bacon character. I enjoyed it, but I just it just seemed like it was pretty kind of vague about what he was, what powers he had, and you know, at the beginning of the film he seems quite older, and then later on in the film he seems younger. And when I mean later on in the film, it's like thirty years later, so I I didn't quite understand the some of the things going on with Kevin Bac Bacon's character. But overall, I love this film. Uh, it's probably probably my second favorite X Men film, and the music is awesome as well. Just one of those films where everything really comes together. Uh, number three, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, another one that really surprised me. Uh, I went to see it and thought, you know, it'll, it'll be pretty good, but um, it was amazing. Absolutely loved it. Some brilliant performances from um, John Lithgow and Andy Serkis as Caesar the the ape. Uh, this is one of the films where I thought, yeah. The you know, CGI was um, warranted here because I I hate CGI most mostly, but this one was done really well. If you're gonna do it, just do it really well. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot of, there's a lot of flaws in this film. There's a lot of flaws in every film, like um, oh, what's his name, the Draco Malfoy from Harry Potter. Um, uh, I forget his name now, um, but the guy who plays Draco in Harry Potter, he was in this, and he had this American accent, and it just didn't seem to fit with the film really. Um, you know, because he's like an actor in the biggest film series of all time, you know, or the most successful film series of all time. So just sticking him in there with an American accent, it's just you know, a bit jarring and stuff. But I've been through that in my review anyway. There's flaws with this film, but it by far, you know, the flaws are nothing compared to how good the, the goodness of this film is. There's a scene in, in it where it's just the apes kind of like in their enclosure and they're going around and there's this scene going on. And there's no talking for like five minutes, and it's it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, some really powerful moments in this, and as I said, John Lithgow was amazing in this. I love him, and um, he really played this part just beautifully. It was awesome. And James Franco is pretty good in it as well. Uh, number two, Fifty Fifty. Now this is another film again that just completely surprised me. In fact, all of, most of these films really surprised me. Fifty Fifty. Joseph Gordon, Gordon Levitt is a character who um, de develops cancer in his back. His best friend is Seth Rogen, and um, I thought, from like the posters and kind of vaguely known about the film, that it was about a guy who pretended to have cancer to kind of get laid, but that was not the case at all. 
Uh, it was a, a really great film with a, a great heart. Really, really funny. Um, you know, I might even say it's funnier than Bridesmaids because it, it wasn't kind of like a, a broad comedy. It was like it felt like a real, real kind of comedy that kind of really complemented the complemented the drama of the film. Um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt was amazing in it because he was so subtle and played it so real. And then at the end, when he kind of has a, a bit of a breakdown, it just it felt so real, you know. I mean, you get some of these Hollywood scenes where it just it seems so forced and like cliche, but this one was just it really hit the spot. It was a really, really down to earth drama that I really enjoyed. And Seth Rogen was good in it as well. I mean, I normally I don't like Seth Rogen that much because he seems to play Seth Rogen in every film he's in. And he kind of did here too, but it kind of fit. And it was my favourite Seth Rogen performance, uh, for sure. And I love the romance in it as well. That was that was done down to a T. Definitely one of the best films that came out in 2011. Now, number one. Uh, before we get to number one, I'll, uh, I'll give you my honourable mentions. Uh, the Thing, the remake of The Thing, that was really good. It really surprised me. Attack the Block, great British film, really funny. Uh, a lot of people didn't like it, but I thought it was brilliant. Fright Night, another really good film. Really enjoyed that one. Breaking Dawn, part one, of course, just kidding. Uh, Paul, uh, I forget that it even came out in 2011, but Paul, again, that one got a lot of bad reviews. I really enjoyed Paul. I thought it was a really just fun film. Obviously not on the level of Shaun the Dead or Hot Fuzz, but I really enjoyed it. Real Steel, another great one, just a really entertaining film. Hugh Jackman was brilliant in it. And, you know, just seeing robots beat the shit out of each other. What more do you want, really? Horrible Bosses. That was a good comedy. Enjoyed that one. Paranormal Activity 3. That was another good one. I thought, you know, I seen the first one. Didn't like it. Didn't bother seeing the second one. But we ended up going to see that one. And I thought it was pretty good. I liked a lot of the things in it. Uh, Scream 4. Again, it's kind of like, you know, it's a rehash in a way. But I really like the way Wes Craven kind of um, uh, put a twist on it. I thought it was really cool. Um, Tower Heist. Another enjoyable, you know, comedy. I mean, Eddie Murphy back to form with Ben Stiller and uh, and Ferris Bueller, <laughs> which is always awesome. Uh, Thirty minutes or less, to a you know a lower degree. I mean, it was it wasn't a great film, but I, I enjoyed Thirty Minutes or Less. You know, there's there's a lot of films out this year that were that were really good. <coughs> so my number one <coughs> is Warrior, starring Tom Hardy and Joel Edgerton. Uh, blew me away. Um, I've I've been looking at the um, the Blu-ray because it's coming out soon, and one of the covers, um, I think it might be one of the foreign covers or maybe one, the UK cover, and it says um, something like the best sports film since Rocky, and usually those kinds of quotes are just like ridiculous, but that one pretty much nails it. It is definitely the the best kind of fight film I've seen since Rocky, and um, that's tough for me to say because um, I'm such a big wrestling fan, and the wrestler, I love that film, but this one I think it's better. Um, another one that just completely surprised me. I thought it would be a fun film, like you know, like with the, the MMA fighting and stuff. But it was such an emotional film. Um, Nick Nolte, who plays the father of both Tom Hardy and Joel Edgerton, was amazing. He should have won an Oscar for that role. Um, and Tom Hardy was absolutely brilliant. Actually, I think Tom Hardy should win an Oscar for this role. I mean, you know, it's not conventional, but Tom Hardy was such a dick in this film, but yet you still rooted for him so much. I mean, to, to make an audience, you know, uh, really dislike you, but pull for you at the same time, it takes takes a lot of talent, and I, I really, you know, thought he was brilliant in this film. Joel Egerton, you know, he had like, it's not like he didn't have a lot to do, but he had the least kind of to do in a part, you know, I mean, he didn't have uh, as much to, to work with as Tom Hardy and Nick Nolte, who had such struggles within their characters. But, you know, he still had his struggles, but it was more toned down. <clears throat> and I think that's the hardest stuff to play. And I thought he really needs to be commended for that as well. I think the the three main leads in this film just completely killed it. This film was awesome. Um, the, end, the ending of the film, the last 10, 12 minutes, were just awesome. Uh, the way they built up to everything. I mean, yeah, it's a bit unrealistic that these two brothers happen to be in the final together in this tournament. And, you know... And the fact that um, Tom Hardy's character, not to spoil anything, but uh, the fact that Tom Hardy's character was, um, has gone AWOL and the military are there to, to kind of arrest him, but they let him have they let him have the final fight. You know, obviously some bits are unrealistic, but it's a film. You know, uh, I just thought it was absolutely brilliant <clears throat> the way it built to to the end, and it was just yeah, it was like Rocky. It was like a a drama centered around a sport, really. 
um, and I thought they did it amazingly well and the ending was yeah brilliant so Warrior is my favourite film of the year by far can't wait to watch it again when it comes out on Blu-ray um, my opinion the best actor of the year is uh, either Tom Hardy or Joseph Gordon-Levitt for um, Warrior and 50-50 uh, obviously, I'm sure there's like a load more, you know, like Drive, um, with um, Ryan Gosling, you know, and Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. I'm sure there's loads of great performances in other films and stuff. But for me, the ones that I've seen, those ones are the ones that really connected with me. Um, best animation film, you know, just quickly throwing out a few things: uh, The Adventures of Tintin, uh, Secret of the Unicorn, I think it's called. That was really, really good. It was, I mean, it's a motion capture animation film, but I thought it was really, really good. It really impressed me, that one. Um, a really great, fun family film. Uh, best scenes, I've got five here. The first one, of course, is the, the fight between um, between uh, Tom Hardy and Joel Edgerton, The End of Warrior. Definitely just the best scene of the year. Followed closely by um, uh, Moses' hallway run in um, Attack the Block. When he uh, runs through the corridor at the end of the film, that's a, that's a brilliant scene. Um, production values, the uh, the train crash scene in Super 8, amazing. Just such an assault on the senses. Caesar in Rise of the Planet of the Apes finally speaking. Really powerful moment. And um, rounding off the uh, the Wolverine cameo in uh, First Class. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> that was brilliant. Um, so yeah, that's my top 10 f uh, films of the year, 2011. Just a quick look back at 2011. Hopefully it was... Quick, maybe it was about 10 minutes long, I don't know. But yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you soon.